Sup witches, how is everybody? I hope you are all doing well and living your very best witchy lives. Um, in this video today, we are going to be talking about potions. I actually got two requests to make another video about potions, just kind of delving a little deeper and going over, you know, what you use potions for and how you use them. So this is that video. I do take requests, so if anyone has any questions, let me know in the comments section and I'll make a video. Um, okay, so let's talk a little bit about what a potion is. So simply put, a potion is an enchanted liquid used for a magical purpose that has been imbued with your intent. Because magic is all intent, right guys? Um, potions can be made out of a bunch of different liquids. We got oils, water, you can use juice, milk, alcohol, really whatever type of liquid you can get your hands on and that feels right to you. Um, so potions are mainly used for their magical purposes and magical properties. However, some potions do have medicinal benefits too. That being said, please, if you're sick or something's wrong, consult a doctor. Um, a lot of times doctors will actually recommend herbal remedies. Um, I know I had nausea problems and my doctor actually recommended to me drinking ginger tea. So make sure you're okay before you just start diagnosing yourself and trying to treat yourself. Um, okay, so potions are usually made with a combination of herbs that help give metaphysical properties to the liquid. This is not always the case though. Sometimes, like moon water, it's just um, charged with some type of energetic property or your intent. So now that I talked a little bit about what potions are, I'm going to talk about the different types of potions, and I don't mean like love potions, prosperity potions. Um, I'm going to talk about like oils and tinctures and the different types of potions you can make and you know whatever type of metaphysical properties you want to imbue into that specific type of potion, you know, that's on you. Consumable potions are any type of potion that you have to drink or consume for the magic to take effect. When you're working with consumable potions, you have to make sure that every ingredient that you're using is food safe. This may differ from person to person depending upon what their allergies are. So if you're going to give a consumable potion to another person, make sure it's safe for them too. One of the most convenient and popular options for consumable potions is tea. I have here ginger tea, which is good for vitality. It has the power of fire in it. Uh, it's great for the solar plexus, and it also has medicinal value. Depending on what herbs are in your tea, it can work with both metaphysical and medicinal value. Ginger is great for curing things to do with the digestive tract. It's good for digestion, which is kind of funny because the metaphysical properties of it is the solar plexus, and that's kind of where it sits. I also have here chamomile with lavender, which is one of my witchy faves for when I'm having a bad empath day. If I'm just frazzled and I need to purify myself of other people's energies and relax, this is what I go for. Lavender is very purifying and chamomile is just so loving and gentle, um, but it also has medicinal properties to help you relax and sleep. The last tea I'm going to show you is peppermint. This is another one of my purifying favorites. It is purifying, but it also enhances your psychic ability or psychic awareness, and it helps with concentration and nausea. Um, you can also mix different ingredients in your kitchen to make different types of consumable potions. A popular love potion for like self-love would be a glass of red wine with a little bit of cardamom sprinkled on top or clove. Another type of um, consumable potion would be turmeric milk, which is great for colds, amazing for colds. Turmeric is amazing. And it also, again, helps with your solar plexus. So yeah, that's a little bit about consumable potions. Potions in the form of oils can include a variety of different types of oils, such as 
herbal infused oils, essential oils, or mineral oils that are blessed or enchanted with your magical intent. These are usually used for anointing people, places, or things to give them the metaphysical quality of your intent. Uh, magical oils can also be used to make different things to be used in magic, such as soaps, candles, cosmetics, uh, bath salts. So really, they're very useful. Um, what I have here is an infused oil that I did a tutorial for. This particular one is rose petal infused in grapeseed oil, and I enchanted this to have the properties of gentle love. So if you want to know how to make this, I will leave the tutorial in the description down below. Potions can be used as a spray or a mist to enchant a person, place, or an object. The idea is that you would spritz it and the magic is now in the air, it's everywhere, it's in your aura, and this is how the magic works. So right here I have a good luck spray. This one is a little bit different than the one that I made in my How to Brew Potions in a Cauldron video. Um, I'll leave that in the description in case you want to check that out. But um, this formula is a little bit different. It smells really good. I'll make a tutorial on this if you guys want me to. Let me know in the comments if you would like this recipe. I also have a anti-anxiety potion that I use as a room spray. I don't have any right now to show on camera because I used it all up. It's my favorite potion because I'm an empath and sometimes that means I get anxiety. So what I'll do is I'll spray it all around a room, on a jacket or a big blanket, and I'll kind of cuddle up with it. The smell is really soothing. It's made with lavender and chamomile, and the energies are really relaxing. And that's what I'll do if I have a really frazzled, bad empath day. So I will post the link to that tutorial in the description as well. So that is it on spray potions. Ritual baths have become very popular in modern magic. And personally, I love a ritual bath, especially since my affinity is definitely for the element of water. Most witches make bath bombs or bath salts to add to their ritual baths, which I adore, but you can also use potions. This potion right here is a super simple one that I would add right to the bath water. It's got some basil in it. It's good for good luck and prosperity. So super simple. Another great recipe would be some milk, rose petals, and cinnamon, and pour that right into the bath. It's super moisturizing and really nice, and it's a perfect self-love potion to add to your ritual bath water. Um, you may also want to use bubble bath liquid as the base liquid for your potion. Um, really, you can get creative here. Tinctures belong in the consumable potion category, but I'm highlighting them with their own segment because of their rich history as folk medicine. Basically, a tincture is a highly concentrated herbal elixir used for medicinal value. You can use it for metaphysical purposes too, but Mainly, it's medicine. So you make a tincture by getting a large amount of herbs and steeping them in a very high proof alcohol, such as Everclear, some type of corn whiskey, or vodka. This being said, please consult a doctor before you're trying any type of herbal remedy on your own. Without medical training, you cannot diagnose yourself, and nine times out of ten, a doctor is going to be okay with you using herbal remedies along with his advice. The last type of potion I'm going to talk to you guys about are crystal elixirs. These again are in the consumable category, however, they really needed a segment of their own. Essentially, a crystal elixir is usually water, but a type of liquid that has been charged with the quality of a gem or a crystal. So how people do this is they'll just drop a crystal in and let it sit overnight or for a couple minutes or an hour, however long until they feel the water is charged with the metaphysical quality of that stone, and then they'll drink it. I think this is dangerous for a couple different reasons. Number one, a lot of crystals are toxic so you really need to be doing the research, making sure that you're not, you know, dropping a toxic crystal into water that you're about to drink. 
Um, I do have a link that I'll put in the description to a list of toxic crystals, but I'm not sure if that's all the toxic crystals there are. So anytime you want to make a crystal elixir, make sure the particular crystal you want to work with isn't toxic. Um, another reason I don't like the idea of just dropping a crystal in is because a lot of times you have colored stones, they're dyed, they're made to be more vibrant, and the dye cannot be good to drink. Um, this is a piece of rose quartz, and it's a very, very light color. I have a very good feeling that this piece of rose quartz has not been dyed. Um, usually you would see a more vibrant color. Maybe the crystal had faded and they wanted to make it a little bit more vibrant, but that's another reason why I don't just like plopping the crystal into my water. What I will do, however, is set the water down and create a crystal grid around it and charge it that way, which I believe is, you know, just as effective and you have peace of mind. I hope this video helped the viewers that asked me to go deeper into potions. If you have a question you would like to ask me or have a topic you would like me to talk about, please let me know in the comments and I'd be happy to get to them. Well, until next time, happy casting.